Today we're looking at a CD and integrated amplifier combo, actually super integrated amplifier combo, from a lesser known company called Lingdorf, who are based in Denmark. That said, the company's founder, Peter Lingdorf, is a minor celebrity in hi-fi circles. And I've been playing with samples of the TDAI 3400 super integrated amplifier, well here for the last, what, three or four weeks? But I've had one in Berlin for 18 months. But the CD2 CD player I've only had here for, yeah, for about a month. And in this video, we're going to put the TDAI 3400 and the CD2 from Lingdorf up against similar-ish priced rivals from a, I guess, a better known manufacturer. This video is brought to you by Rune 2.0, the revolutionary music player designed for true music fanatics. Click to runelabs.com for more information. Welcome back everybody. Yes, the TDAI 3400 is a digital amplifier. That means the signal travels digitally all the way through to the output stage where it's converted from PCM to PWM. And then that PWM drives the MOSFET output devices. There are no GANFETs here, there are MOSFETs here. And we get 200 watts per channel into eight ohms and 400 watts per channel into four ohms. And I learned only very recently that the volume attenuation inside the 3400 isn't done in the preamp stage or really on the volume part. It's done in the output stage. It's a proper variable output stage amplifier. And it's designed that way so that the amplifier sounds the same irrespective of volume level. That's the idea anyway. Now I've already mentioned that the 3400 is what I call a super integrated amplifier. And it has inside a MM phono stage a DAC and a streamer that gives us Spotify Connect, Tidal Connect, Apple AirPlay 2 and Rune Readiness. But there's no Chromecast in the bigger Lingdorf amplifier, this one. In the 1120 there is Chromecast in this one. For some reason, I don't know why, there isn't. However, some of us might look at this 3400 amplifier from Lingdorf and see essentially a computer front end with an amplifier attached to it because we can control it obviously with the volume wheel and the infrared remote wand, but there's also an app to change the volume, the input, and also the basic EQ settings. And if we click open device in browser, then we get a whole range of more advanced settings in a web browser. And those advanced settings, I'm trying to remember them to talk them to camera right now, but I can't. I'm gonna to have to pick up my laptop and just tell you what they are and read them off the screen. I'm so sorry for this, it's very unprofessional, but so we can get signal routing, through those advanced settings, subwoofer integration, parametric EQ, a multi-point parametric EQ, and voicing presets. They are really what I call the basic EQ settings, which you can access from the app initially. And then obviously, I think the star of this show in terms of DSP is the Room Perfect room correction software. So that leaves the CD2 that sits on top of the 3400 in my case, just to play back CDs. Remember in these two videos, this one and the previous one, we're looking at amplifier CD player combos, the two together. So the CD2 is sitting on top of my 3400, it's right over there in the rack, and the CD2 just plays CDs. And its internal Wolfson DAC circuitry is not accessible from any digital inputs on the back, there's nothing like that here. But we do get three sets of outputs. So we get some digital outputs and then two different analog outputs, balanced and single-ended. I've only used the single-ended in my testing. Single-ended means the RCA sockets. And in the output stage of the CD2, we find op-amps and not discrete components. Whereas if we look at the SACD30N from Marantz, discrete components. So there's a different kind of way of thinking about how to design a CD player. I guess right at hand here. So that brings us to side-by-side -side comparison territory where I have the, the Lingdorf CD player and amplifier here and the Marantz CD player and amplifier that I covered in the last video also still here. So we can go deep into side-by-side -side comparison territory. So 
So if we're just comparing amplifiers, so the Marantz Model 30 versus the Lingdorf TD-AI 3400, I would say that the Lingdorf gives us more detail than the Marantz. And it's more talented with I just pulling apart like filou pastry, the, the layers of music or makes it more obvious for us to mentally separate the layers of music. But that detail and layer separation comes at the expense of some tonal mass when listening to the best of Luna. And with the Bowers and Wilkins 703 S3 loudspeakers in play, occasionally the Lingdorf pushes them into pins and needles territory, you know, where details can come across as a little bit too spiky in their delivery. But that's a minor difference and a minor grumble. And these differences between the two amplifiers in terms of loudspeaker outputs are also mirrored in their headphone outputs. So we get three and a half mil on the Lingdorf amp, 6.4 mil on the Marantz amp. And yeah, the Marantz is fuller and fleshier and the Lingdorf is leaner and keener and I guess a bit zippier with transients. And we note a similar sonic delta when comparing the two CD players, analog outputs, the single ended outputs. We get a slightly fleshier sound from the Marantz and a slightly leaner and zippier sound from the Lingdorf. And I would say that the Lingdorf CD player is more lit up in the top end, a little bit twitchier than the Marantz. So if you want the faster sounding units, I would go with the Lingdorf. But if you want the meatier sounding units, I would go with the Marantz. But as always, these are audiophile differences. They're not enormous. They're not night and day. This doesn't blow this out of the water. I really don't know why some audiophiles talk like that. We have to put these things in context. Yes, these differences are small in the broader context. And yes, those smaller differences matter to audiophiles like me. These small differences matter to me. I'm teasing them out, but I'm also putting them back into context when I talk about them being audiophile differences, because the average person probably wouldn't pick them unless they've been listening and listening and listening for weeks and weeks and weeks. And the Lingdorf CD player's defining quality, a bit like the amplifier's defining quality, is a sort of microdynamically driven rhythmic propulsion. It just sounds a bit snappier than the Marantz. But Lingdorf amplifier owners have options here because if we move the connection between the CD player and the amplifier, the 3400, from the analog domain to the digital using a spit of coax cable, in that particular case, then the amplifier takes care of DA conversion with its PWM output stage. I think I noticed when playing Daft Punk's Homework, Soft Boy's Next Doorland, The Those, Hanky Panky, and In Order to Dance 4 from r &S, Playing all of those, I think the CD2 in its digital output and going into the Lingdorf amplifier gives us a little bit more transparency in the presence region. And I guess right at the very top, we notice a little bit more avidity, but again, just tiny differences. So flipping that around, we might say that the analog output of the CD2 is a little bit more subdued, especially in the uppermost frequencies than when the DA conversion is done by the 3400 amplifier. And that's useful to know when driving a pair of speakers like the Bowers and Wilkins that you see behind me, the 703 S3, whose tweeter is easily provoked. And on a system level, so CD player and amplifier together, I would say that the Lingdorf pairing is marginally better suited to the Zoo Audio Soul 6, also the red speakers that you see behind me, because of its I guess additional brilliance in the top end sometimes, especially if we're using the digital connection between the CD player and the amp. And especially when listening to brighter recordings like the Soft Boys Next Door Land, and maybe like Pulp's His and Hers in places. And that ever so slight bit of extra brilliance in the top end really helps to drive forward, I guess the machine funk at the core of Daft Punk's homework. And when I move the Lingdorf pairing back to the Bowers and Wilkins 703, S3, I make sure that inside the Lingdorf app, I have the voicing music two engaged because that just pulls back that top end brilliance, just a smidge, just enough for me to feel like the tweeter isn't being overly present or overly insistent. And it's really useful to have those kinds of tunings inside the app. And there's a whole bunch of them inside the Lingdorf app. And let's not forget, there is a parametric EQ where we can fine tune it to our liking, should we so wish. And in fact, the 3400 can be tuned effectively to any pair of loudspeakers. 
we can make it sound pretty much any way we want it to. Now obviously we can't EQ the 3400 to sound like the Marantz. There are certain facets of the Marantz that are delivered beyond the frequency domain. Now we have covered Lingdorf's Room Perfect room correction software in at least two other videos previously, and I'll link to those in the description box below. But Room Correction Smarts is one area in which the Lingdorf set, the CD player, and the, mainly the amplifier, steps cleanly ahead of the Marantz pairing, because there's no room correction inside the Marantz amplifier. And that functional difference points us at areas in which I think these two CD player and amplifier sets more cleanly separate, or more cleanly separate than on sound quality alone. For example, the Lingdorf amplifier is room ready and it has Tidal Connect built in, which the Marantz doesn't have, which I think is a real advantage to many people, I guess like me, because I'm making videos essentially for people like me who have my taste in music and play it in similar ways to that which I do. And that also means streaming from a TV over HDMI because the Lingdorf amplifier has an optional HDMI module that can be inserted into the back. I think you have to do that at the factory, but I could be wrong on that. But mine came with that pre-fitted and I find that invaluable, not just when watching Netflix, but also when streaming from Apple Music, which I run on my TV, the Samsung frame that you see behind me. But the Danish amplifier can't match the Japanese amplifier on turntablism. Marantz have it all over the Lingdorf when it comes to connecting a turntable because we get MM and MC functionality from the Marantz and we only get MM from the Lingdorf. And to be honest, I think, and I'm guessing here actually, I am guessing, I'm gonna let you know. I think the phono stage inside the Marantz is really, really good. And I think it's quite a bit better than the MM only found in the Lingdorf. But please take that with a huge dollop of salt. Now, whoever decided that the track selector button on the Lingdorf CD player should be a rotary to turn to select the track you want and then a push to play that track deserves a goddamn raise because I think that's genius. And I much prefer it to kind of clicking left and right to navigate the tracks that you have to do on the SACD30N from Marantz. So well done Lingdorf for that kind of functional and aesthetic difference. However, that rotary knob and also the big volume rotary on the Lingdorf amplifier, it isn't as resistive, it isn't as stiff to turn as the Marantz switches and knobs. Yes, we're talking about knob feel here. I think the knob feel, generally speaking, on the Marantz is a little bit better than the Lingdorf, but only by, I guess, a personal preference margin. I mean, you might feel differently. You might really like the freewheeling nature of the volume knob on the Lingdorf, I'm okay with it, but I don't like it as much as a kind of big, heavy turning knob. Moreover, the way that the CD2 sits beautifully on top of the 3400, I think better suits somebody with a more minimalist approach to aesthetics. It better suits me because I think in an ideal world, I would not own a hi-fi rack. I do because of this job that I do in covering hi-fi. But you don't need a hi-fi rack for the Lingdorf gear, and I'd say you do for the Marantz gear, or at least you need to separate the Marantz CD player and the amplifier, not only to look good. I mean, some people argue that that also makes a difference to sound or to heat dissipation, but the Marantz amplifier, it's class D. It doesn't really give off too much heat and neither does the Lingdorf. And I love the way that they've been designed to sit on top of one another. So I could comfortably have those sitting on my Kallax rack and not be weirded out by their bulk as I am with the Marantz units. And the Lingdorf pairing is also for somebody who enjoys the more lit up or the more squeegee clean nature of some Class D amps because the Marantz isn't that. And it's also for somebody who appreciates the fact that you can take 
as sound and tailor it quite heavily in many different directions using a parametric EQ and using Room Correction courtesy of Room Perfect. And Room Perfect is super easy to use. I think I find it easier to set up and install than I do Dirac Live. It's more mom and dad friendly. And I would add that the 3400 for me has greater utility for my apartment in Berlin for correcting its base problems. I've got a 35 hertz peak in that room that I obviously can't get rid of because it's mathematically encoded into the room's dimensions. And for me, the 3400 helps me solve that problem or mitigate that problem, or rather it adjusts the output of my speakers so that it isn't triggering that mode quite so much. And you think that only affects the, the frequency response of the speakers, but it actually improves the imaging. So you get more pinpoint imaging. You can better work out where different players are on the soundstage when you have that room correction on the, than when it's off. And I have the same result here in Lisbon, but it's not quite as dramatic here because I don't have the bass problems here that I have in Berlin. However, I do use Room Perfect when I'm integrating subwoofers with a pair of loudspeakers. Because for me, Room Perfect and its subwoofer integration smarts is by far the smoothest path to getting the sound that I want and getting the subwoofers integrated properly with the speakers, both in the frequency domain and the time domain. It takes care of all of that. I don't have to worry about that. For me, Room Perfect is amazing in that respect, just amazing. So if you have a pair of loudspeakers that need a little bit of an extra push in the top end, the Lingdorf pairing will be for you. If you want to integrate subwoofers without having to do the silly crawl across the floor, then the Lingdorf pairing will be for you. And especially if you have a small room where mathematically bass problems are baked into that room, then again, the Lingdorf pairing will be for you. And I think the Lingdorf pairing is of more universal use to more audiophiles than the Marantz pairing. I think the Marantz pairing is yeah, it's more for the old school audiophile, the traditional audiophile, somebody who is very entrenched in physical media, vinyl LPs and obviously with CDs and SACDs. Obviously the Lingdorf doesn't do SACDs. I see the Lingdorf system as more of a streaming centric system with the option of CDs from the CD2 if you want it. I guess what I'm saying here is that the Lingdorf pairing, the CD2, and the TDAI 3400 are quintessential FutureFi. Anyway, if you like this video, if you found it useful, entertaining, informative, or a combination of all three, then please give us a like down below. If you like my attitude towards comparing different hi-fi systems that have very different approaches and very different target markets, then please consider subscribing to the channel, also by pushing the button down below, and thank you ever so much, as always, for watching. Hello, me again. You're watching this video right now on YouTube. But if you want to see a version of this video that also features a music or album recommendation in the middle of the video and features bloopers right in this spot, then you need to go over to my Patreon where you can watch that exact video right now.